Sound Design. All right, so how do you import a GLL file into your audio analyzer so you can use it in the field? That's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. And what I'm going to do is just go through it quickly so you can see how it works. And then I'll go through it a little bit more slowly. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in Smart, RumiQ Wizard, and Sat Live. Okay, so here is the fast version. You download the GLL file from uh, the manufacturer. GLL file, make sure you have the GLL viewer installed. You open up the GLL file in the GLL viewer. You do your system configuration. You calculate the graph, export that graph, and then over in your audio analyzer, you do some sort of import function, and then it shows up. And it's pretty much the same in every audio analyzer. Um, but now I'm going to go through a little bit slower. So um, because you might run into a few problems. So first you'll need Windows to run a GLL viewer. So hopefully you have um, Parallels or Wine or a Windows machine. Not every manufacturer, not every model of speaker has a GLL file available on the website, um, especially subwoofers and you can contact the manufacturer and ask them for it, but I've discovered that many times they don't have it. Um, and even if you get it, sometimes it won't have complete data. So this is kind of a special situation where this particular speaker happens to have the GLL data and even the subwoofer that goes with it has it as well. I'm looking at this particular speaker because I had to use this for the very first time on a show last month um, I posted a video about a show I did in Texas for Senator Kamala Harris. And uh, I think like two days before the event, I found out that these are the speakers I was using. I was like, okay, I've never used these before. I'm supposed to be an expert in all things, you know, audio hardware when I show up in the field. And yet, how can I get to know this product if I can't actually touch it until we show up that day? And this is always kind of the catch, right? We're supposed to know how to use all this stuff but unless you have uh, personal access to this hardware and software, how do, you, how do you practice with it? How do you get learned to use it? So getting these GLL files and learning to work with them can be one of the ways that you do that. And um, it's especially true for things like this particular speaker, which as far as I know, there is no um, prediction environment that comes directly from the manufacturer. So you could also open up this GLL file in Ease, um, but that is not necessarily gonna help me out in the field. And what I want to happen is I get into the field, I take the measurement, and then I compare it to the GLL file. And so that tells me, um, first of all, is the box working as it's supposed to? And the other big thing it tells me is, what is happening in between the time the sound comes out of the box and then interacts with the room and other systems and then makes it to my ears or to my measurement microphone. And so it gives me some really important clues as to um, which parts of the system are contributing to you know, what changes. And so where do I take action on the system? Okay, enough about why you might need to do it. Um, so you grab that file and then over in the GLL viewer, you're gonna open it up. So you go to file, open GLL file. And if it's a box like this, it might open in some kind of configuration. Now, if you're in a hurry, I recommend that you just do a single cabinet, do whatever you know preset. You'll see that sometimes you open these up and there's like a preset here. Do whatever preset it seems like is like most flat or most normal, or whatever you think you're gonna use this export that, and then you have at least something. If you're not in a hurry, try to export as many configurations as possible. Then imagine, you know, in your audio analyzer, you could have a folder that says R uh, RCF. Then you can have a folder inside there that says HDL20. And then you could have all these different presets so that once you get into the field, anytime you need to use this box, you just find whatever particular combination of settings or preset you're gonna use and you can open that up. Oh, I should mention that you can uh, go to the info panel here and you can learn some stuff about how this was created. 
Um, I don't know if it's a huge deal, but it's interesting for me that some people have used a third party to create their measurements. So in this case, it says data authorized by certified lab. No. So that means that RCF did this themselves in their own lab, and that's probably fine. But uh, I almost would, I think I would trust data more if the manufacturer said, I'm going to give this to a third party and they're going to certify it. They're going to authorize it. And so I think that that's pretty cool when people do that. Anyway, you can learn some stuff about like where this was created and, and when it was created. So 2016. Okay, so getting this set up, um, what seems most valuable for me is to try to create a configuration that will be similar to what I'm going to use in the field. And I know it's going to change once I actually get into the field, but I can, you know, try to guess a few different things. So I create a design, I say, okay, it's going to use all these different things, but it might actually use this preset instead of that preset, that kind of thing. Because as you can see, there's a lot of different variables here. And unless you're going to go through all of them, you at least want a handful in case some things change. Okay, so I have eight cabinets in this array. Uh, I've put in these splay values that I actually used at the show, and I chose a preset that I actually used in the show. So what are all these presets? These are the combination of the buttons that you can find on the back of the box. So here's the back of the box. There's no preset really, but there's all these buttons that you can click on. Indoor, outdoor. So that's what this is. It says outdoor. Uh, how many boxes in the cluster? So that's this is seven to nine. And then is it uh, near or far? And so I've chosen far. And then there's something after that. And I think this is just a problem with the way I have parallels set up, but you can't read to the right of this. So it says more things here. Hopefully on yours, you can read the entire thing. Okay, so I have eight of these. I put in the display. I put in the preset into all these boxes. After you go through all this work, you might want to save the configuration so you can load it again later. Next is to calculate the balloon. So I was at about 100 feet on this show. That's about 30 meters. So the closest one I could pick was 30 meters. Uh, I always set this to high. And I think I just left in kind of the default settings here. It's pretty close to um, the actual environment. and. If I want to have something to compare in the field, I will usually leave enable air attenuation on. Um, if I want to have something that's like a representation of the anechoic response, then I will uncheck this. But in this case, for you know having a, a nice comparison in the field, I'll leave that checked. When you click OK, it's going to start calculating uh, the information for you. Now, you don't have to go through this step every time. If I just make a tiny you know, change here, I can just go up here and click Calculate, Recalculate. Now, when you first open this up, I think it's going to have something like this. So then you just need to go to Graphs, Transfer Function, and here you can see we've got the phase in blue and the level in brown. You can change these graph settings, but I think I've always just left it on default. I don't think I ever changed anything here. Uh, except these colors are kind of ugly. Anyway, once that all is the way you like it, then you can export it. And instead of using the words export, it says send table to file. And I'm going to recommend that you write everything into the file name that you might need later. Uh, I have made the mistake several times of forgetting to write down the delay and the settings here, and then I get a little bit confused. So here, uh, you can see in this file name I've written down, you know, eight boxes. Here's this preset that I'm using, and here's the delay that I found. Okay, so let's actually just copy this, and I'll just make a note for myself that um, uh, air attenuation was on. So I save that. Let's go to my first audio analyzer. Let's hide everything. Import ASCII. Okay, you have a bunch of settings here. Um, with my experiments, I found it doesn't really matter. Um, I wish it would just kind of auto detect, but I guess it's a little bit complicated because of the way MTW works. 
I'm not, I don't quite understand, but um, I can tell you that if you import them at three different sample rates, which is what I've done here, and you just make them all lay on top of each other, they're exactly the same, except up here at the very high end, if I cycle through these, you'll see that only the one at 96K has these last few values here. And we can see a little bit of uh, variation here. Insignificant, right? So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, just import it and, you know, any of these are going to be fine for the kind of work we need to do in the field of just uh, making a comparison and helping us make some decisions. So let me go back and actually import that new file. All right, there's nothing here, and that's because we just imported uh, absolute values. And so it's way up high. So I could go in here, info db offset minus 100. But if I didn't do that, it's a lot faster just to shift click and it pops it down there. So while I have this here, you might be wondering like how close is this to what I actually measured in the field. So I think this is my first measurement. Um, this is an average of three mics. And I think this is before I did an EQ. So how much do these actually match up? Um, I think you can see some similarities. Not here, uh, and not here where we start to have some low frequency gain. Um, but this is kind of cool to see how some of these peaks really line up. Uh, I think that's it for smart. Let's take a look at Room EQ Wizard. It's very simple, file, import, import frequency response. What's cool about uh, Room EQ Wizard is it imports the exact same values. So there's, there's nothing uh, about interpolating the values to bring them in. It should just have them exactly the same as they are in the file here. Okay, and then in Sat Live, it is very similar. You right click on a quick trace, load the quick trace. When you first open this, the file type will be CSV, but you can switch it to a text file and then you can open this. Um, this is not gonna work. Sat Live doesn't like all the stuff I think in the file header. So if you wanna open this in Sat Live, it's really simple. All you need to do is open this file and delete all this text up here. So you're just left with these values and then it'll open fine. So I have that already here. I created one called Sat Live and then I imported it here. And we'll have the same problem as we did in uh, Smart. So if I reset this to zero, there's no data here, but if I just click center the trace, there we go, there's our data. Okay, so that's how you import this stuff. Um, what I wanna talk about in the next video is how you might work with this a little bit. You know, what if you wanna play around with the EQ? What if you wanna import both the main and the sub that you're gonna be using on the show two speakers that you may have never used before. And what if you want to find uh, an alignment between them? So then you have the pre-alignment values. So then once you get in the field, you can do the relative absolute method. All you need to do is take the geometric distance offset with your laser distance measure, and then you've got your crossover alignment. And that's one thing you can check off the list, one thing you don't have to worry about. Um, but that, that'll take a little bit more time to play with, but that'll be the next video. Um, let me know if you saw something that I did wrong or, or some way that I could improve this technique. It seems pretty simple to me, but maybe also I said something wrong about the GLL file, so let me know. And let me know if you've tried this in the field and kind of what your results have been. All right, thanks. Sound design. Yeah.